All right, this video is going to dive into interrupts a little bit more. Um, the last video I made, uh, we looked at the SysTick um, in the Cortex core. Um, we're going to see an example of how you enable an interrupt that passes through the NVIC, uh, the actual vector uh, interrupt controller in the ARM core. I'm sorry, in the uh, Kinetis chip. So uh, the first we mentioned before that the first 16 interrupt sources do not pass through the vectored interrupt controller. Uh, you know, vectors 16 on do. And so whenever a semiconductor company kind of licenses the ARM core, they have their own peripherals that will generate interrupts. Um, they go through this interrupt controller. So uh, what's kind of cool is once you learn the NVIC, regardless of the... Um, Regardless of who makes the uh, ARM Cortex, uh, you know, part, you know, the, the variant, you, you'll kind of understand how to enable interrupts. So uh, for this, we're going to need um, uh, a different example project from the Freescale Cup wiki called Flex Timer uh, NVIC. In this case, we're going to use one of the Flex Timers instead of the SysTech uh, to generate an interrupt. So the Flex Timer is specific to Freescale. So grab that project and you can import it and uh, we're going to look at it. Now there's some other stuff in here like uh, for example this this particular code is going to use the LCD on the quick stick. Um, I'm not going to review how that works but uh, you can kind of take a look on your own. Um, I just want to use it as a way to uh, so you can see how to kind of use the NVIC and once you learn it for the flex timer uh, you can use it for anything. Um, the first thing we're going to do is that interrupts work for the NVIC kind of like they do as it does for like the SysTick for the first 15. Um, what you first do is you've got to initialize your peripheral. So within the CPU, um, the CPU folder here, I have something called Flex Timer. Now the Flex Timers within the uh, uh, the the Freescale chips are, are very, very powerful. They can do pulse width modulation, uh, capture pulses, generate pulses. Um, but there is a mode you can use it. Remember, all these flex timers are is essentially a counter and a comparator. Um, well, the, what you can do in its most basic operation, we set up the flex timer so its main counter will count up to some value. When it gets to that value, uh, it'll overflow. Um, it'll kind of reset and reset to zero, count up to that value again. Um, so on and so forth. So I'm not going to go through, uh, you can kind of read through the comments in the flex timer source here to understand how I do it as an example. But uh, just keep in mind that the flex timer, the way it's configured is that the main counter, I just have it count up to the mod value and then it essentially just reloads, uh, you know, another special value, uh, uh, you know, to give us our special um, special rate. So, and here you notice I actually, you know, go through this calculation based upon the core clock, um, you know, the prescale value, the overflow frequency I want, um, and you can kind of take a look at that. To set it up, you, you know, you have to do a few things and you can read through the manual, but here is what we need to know to enable the interrupt. So, to enable this overflow functionality, there is an overflow interrupt enable within the flex timer. So to enable any interrupt that will go through the NVIC, it's kind of like a two-step process. First, you have to initialize the particular, um, the particular peripheral and enable the interrupt in the peripheral itself. So here I am actually enabling, and you can look in the manual, the overflow interrupt for the flex timer. Now, at this point, you know, once you kind of, you know, once you kind of, you know, do this, the flex timer, you know, it, it'll work. It, you know, once the, the clock's enabled, it's running. But it's not necessarily generating and responding to interrupts yet. Once every interrupt from any particular module has to pass through the vectored interrupt controller. So what you have to do is enable the interrupt on the, con the vector controller. Now, you can look uh, like just the SysTick. Um, there is a whole, all this documentation, 
on how you enable it. Um, there is a standard way that uh, if you have a SimSys library, if someone wrote it for your particular chip to do it, um, I'm going to give you the example code to uh, enable and disable the interrupts. Uh, but you can actually look through here and see how it actually works. Um, but to make it work, you first have to enable it on uh, the NVIC. So the first thing you have to note before you do that is what number. And here is the most difficult uh, distinction, that the most confusing thing about you know, ARM and interrupts. Because the first 16 are reserved for the core, there's kind of two different numbers. One is the vector number. That's kind of the slot in the table you'd populate a function. Then you have something called the IRQ number. The IRQ number is essentially the vector number minus 16, those first core interrupts. So what you do is you just kind of look down, um, you know, through here, and you can find, uh, you know, what, that, what your IRQ number is. So here's like CAN bus, you see where the UARTs. So for example, we're using flex timer zero. Um, it's vector number 78, so it's uh, slot number 78 in the table, but its IRQ number is 62. Um, if you look, um, I give you a nice function called armcm4. This is from right off the free scale, I believe it's the Kinetis SC uh, examples. This actually has some, uh, some low level. Uh, functions to use uh, for setting priorities. You can stop the processor. Well, there's one, a function here called IRQ. Now, the only thing confusing about enable IR, uh, about this, this is you don't put the vector number, you put the IRQ number. So we would put the number 62 in here. So in my code, you notice I have, there's this nice symbol here. So in the, if we kind of find, the actual header file for the Kinetis, there is an enumeration, a C enumeration for all of the vector numbers. Uh, not necessarily, that's not the IRQ numbers for the vector numbers. Um, so this includes those initial 16. Well, you're going to see if we go down here that there's one for FTM0. So because this is the vector number, not the IRQ number, we can just type in that symbol in FTM0 and subtract 16. Now at this point, this now, the everything is enabled from the, the, the NVIC point of view. Um, the only thing we haven't done is actually, um, uh, we haven't actually populated the table yet. So just like the SysTick, uh, vectors, because context switching is done uh, in hardware, there's no difference between an interrupt function and any other function. I have something called flex timer IRQ. Um, you know, I toggle, and uh, I also have like a tick that if it's, you know, I kind of decrement. And in the case of the flex timer, there is a there is a uh, overflow bit that that you have to clear, and you'd have to read the manual to know this for the flex timer that every time you get the interrupt, you have to clear clear this interrupt the overflow flag bit. So we do that. Now we have to actually populate this function in the table. So if we go under the startup code and the sysinit, what we have to do is look for the vector number. Remember, the vector number includes the first 16. That's at number 78. And once again, I'll open up my table. Here's the vector number. 78 is the flex timer. And find line 78 and just pop it in. Now, always don't remember the compiler has to see it or the linker has to see it. So include your header file that has your um, has your function prototype. Then once you do that, you're done. You know this thing will it'll just work. So so once again to kind of recap to enable a interrupt that goes through the vector interrupt controller, which is all of them that is kind of chip specific. You have to enable it in the peripheral itself. Then you have to call this enable IRQ and give it the IRQ number. Then finally populate the table. Now lastly, I'll, I'll go quickly. What this example shows is kind of how to use like a, you know, a timer to kind of do like a non-blocking kind of delay. So let's say you wanted to do something every 100 milliseconds. 
excuse me, every second. I have, I believe I have the flex timer set to overflow at a 10 millisecond rate. Instead of calling that blocking delay function for the SysTech, let's do it in such a way that it doesn't hold up the CPU. Well, I have a, a ticker here that uh, um, will be decremented every 10 milliseconds in the interrupt routine. So right here it is. Flex timer tick, if it's greater than zero, it gets decremented. Our main loop can simply look at this, it can look at this value. Notice if I see it zero, I kind of reset the ticker to 100, and then I put a number on the screen. This is always better than doing a delay function, because think about every time you go through this for loop. All right, 10 milliseconds is an extremely long, I'm sorry, a whole, is, I'm sorry, uh, one second is an extremely long time for a chip running 100 megahertz. We don't want to sit there and just wait. What we do is every once in a while we just check to see if this flag is set, and if so, execute this code. That way you can have things going on in this other for loop that's not, uh, that's not kind of uh, blocked by this function. So this stuff will execute extremely quickly. You just periodically look to see if, uh, uh, if your flag is set, um, if the ticker kind of ran out. Uh, so that's another quick example of how I use the NVIC, um, the interrupt controller. So uh, once you know this, you can essentially use anything that is interrupt. You do it in the exact same way. Enable it in the peripheral. Uh, enable the IRQ number in the NVIC. Uh, populate the table, and you're good to go.